Hi, I am Daniel Alm, the creator of Timing, the automatic time tracking app for Mac. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Timing to make your time tracking both easier and more accurate. But before we dive in, let's make sure that your time tracking is actually set up correctly. For this, let's have a look at the little T icon in the top right part of your menu bar. This one. This is the Timing menu item. As long as it is there, Timing will track how you spend time on your Mac, even when you close Timing's main app. So what else does the menu item offer you? First of all, it shows you how much time you spend today. It also offers you an option to open the Timing main application. Then it lets you start and stop tasks. Um, for these, these tasks are essentially blocks of time like in a manual time tracking application. You just enter what you are doing, which project to assign this time for, how long you will probably take, and then you click start tracking. After this time is over, timing will automatically remind you so that your task does not overrun accidentally. Then we also have the option to pause timings tracking for a while so that you can have some privacy. And we have the option to launch timing automatically at login. I strongly recommend that you turn on this feature so that timing will always track you and you will not miss time because timing has not been running. Lastly, you can even have timing ask you automatically what you have been doing when you were not on your Mac as soon as you return on your Mac. This is very useful, for example, when you spend a lot of time in meetings because then timing will automatically ask you what you have been doing as soon as you return to your Mac and you can enter the meeting right away instead of forgetting to enter it later. All right, that was the timing menu item. Let's have a look at the main app. First of all, in the tab bar, you can see timing's four main sections. First is overview, which shows you some general information about you have, how you have been spending your time and how productive you were. Then we have review, which we will dive into later, which lets you assign time to different projects. Then we have details, which shows a similar information to review, but with more detail. For example, in this mode, you can see exactly which files you have been editing and for how long, and how much time you spend on an individual website. So if the information on the review screen is not enough for you, you might want to have a look at this screen. Lastly, we have the report screen, which lets you generate different kinds of reports, for example, timesheets that you can then send to your clients, or just an overview of what you have been doing this week so that you see exactly where your time went. All of this is possible on the report screen. You can also export those uh, timesheets, for example, as PDF. All right, let's get back to the overview screen and look at all its elements. First of all, you have the total time box, which shows you how much time you have been spending overall in the time that you can select in the top title bar of the app. And it also shows you how much time you have been spending per week. Then you can also see on which weekdays you have been working most and during which hours you are working most. Similarly, um, you can see how productive you have been and which weekdays have been more productive and less productive. You also see during which hours you are mo most productive. What you can see here in my case, for example, is that I work very little on weekends and am less productive during that time. And I also work less and am less productive in the evenings as well, which is kind of to be expected. You also can see here how you have been spending time on your different projects across weeks. And you see an overview of your total time spent on projects and apps. Now let's have a look on how we can actually assign this time to projects. For this, let's first select an individual day. And then let's go to the review screen. What you see here at the top is the so-called timeline, which has four rows. The first row, App Activity, shows you when you have been using which application during the day so that you can get a quick overview of your day. The second row, project, displays colors according to how these app activities or tasks have been assigned to projects. Lastly, the tasks row displays tasks which in timing are just blocks of time. Uh, now you might be wondering why use tasks and manual tracking at all when timing can do automatic time tracking. 
The reason for that is that tasks let you assign a lot of time at once to a project so that you don't have to assign all these app activities manually. And in addition, some clients prefer when you show them the blocks of time that you have been working for them and not just um, I have been working 10 seconds here and 10 seconds there. Instead, I, they want information like I have been working for these whole two hours. Now we have a look at the projects list in the sidebar, which shows you how much you have been working on each project and lets you see the hierarchy of your projects. Lastly, we have a look at the main area of the review screen, which contains four cards. The first card contains keywords. These keywords are generated automatically by timing, by inspecting what you have been working on, for example, all the websites and documents you have been using, and then looking at which words were most common during these activities. It then displays these most common words in this list. So you do not need to manually specify any kind of keywords. Then we have a list of all the websites that you have been visiting. And we have a list of all the applications that you have been using and the folders that you have been working. We can use these four cards to quickly assign all the time during your day to different projects. I'm going to demonstrate this now, but as you can see by the colors in the project row on the timeline, a lot of this time has already been assigned to projects. So first of all, I'm going to select all applications in the applications card and drag them back onto the unassigned project to make sure that we can reassign this time again now. I'm also going to select this unassigned project so that I don't have to assign time twice that I have already assigned before. So what have I, have I been working on? The first thing that comes to mind is the timing keyword which, as you can see here, actually has two hours, which is quite a lot. So I will just drag this keyword onto the timing project. And as you can see above, a lot of time has now been assigned to the timing project. And this is exactly what we wanted. We have already assigned a lot of our time with just one drag. But the problem is, tomorrow you would have to do the same drag again. That's where timing's rules come in. Rules let you automatically assign activities to projects without you having to drag them over again and again and again. For this, I will demonstrate how to do this with the timing keyword again, for example. So I drag timing onto the timing project again, but this time I keep the option key pressed while dragging. As you can see, you now have a green plus icon next to the cursor, which means that timing will create a rule when you now drop. So I'm doing this, and now that I have done this, timing will assign all future activities that contain the keyword timing onto the particular project. Let's go back to the unassigned project and assign a few more activities. For example, in Drift is my support widget, so I'm assigning it to that project. As you can see here now, I'm doing support during all times of the day which kind of makes sense because people chat me up and then I respond. So this is distributed across all my day. I can also assign Twitter, for example, to the unproductive social media project and some apps like SQL Pro to timing because this is development related as well as the terminal app. I can also drag mail to communication as well as Slack. Now we already have quite a lot of time assigned but there are still gaps and we want to get an even better overview of our time. So let's go back to the all activities project to see our timeline in full detail. What you can see on the task timeline now are these colored boxes with plus icons inside them. When you hover them, they will turn into an add task button, which lets you quickly assign a whole block of time at once. So let's click this once. And again, you can enter a description for the tasks. For example, in this case, I have been working on error handling, so I will just enter that. And then I click Add Task, and this whole time has now been assigned to the project Timing. You can also see that even in the empty time over here, Timing has still created a gray task suggestion. This suggestion, for example, lets you create tasks even for time when you were not on your Mac, for example, in a meeting. So let's say I had a meeting about marketing here. I would enter that here. 
select the appropriate project and click add task. And now, as you can see, all this time has now been assigned to the marketing project. On that note, if you want to see how much time you spend in a particular project, including its sub-projects, simply collapse the project by clicking the chevron next to it. As you can see, the time in the bubble has now increased because it now also includes time spent in sub-projects. To revert this, simply expand the project again by clicking the chevron again. Let's go through a few more tasks that timing has detected here. So here's another one. I just click the task. I click add task and all this time has been assigned to the timing project. I can make this even faster by instead of hitting the add task button, just pressing return. So I will press return now and select another task and another and another. And now all my time of the day has essentially been assigned already. As you can see, as soon as you have a few rules set up, most of these activities will have been assigned automatically. And then you can just create tasks to cover the remaining times with just a few clicks. It's really easy. There's one last thing that I would like to show you in this video, and that is the project editor. For example, let's double click the timing project to edit it. What you can see here is a dialog that lets you edit the project's name, its color, its productivity rating. This productivity rating is then later used to compute your productivity score. So if you spend a lot of time in a productive project, your productivity score will be higher. And if you spend a lot of time in an unproductive project, your productivity score will be lower. And what you also have in this project editor is a list of keywords. Those are just the keywords that I have dragged onto the project so that these keywords will automatically get assigned to the timing project in the future. Lastly, we also have the rule editor, which lets you specify in more detail which activities should automatically be assigned to this project and which shouldn't. We have a detailed article on how to create rules in our documentation, so I'm not going into details here. This already brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I wish you much success with timing. In case you would like to learn more about the app, you can visit us at any time at timingapp.com. And if you would prefer a written summary of this video, make sure to sign up for our five-day email course on timingapp.com slash help, which covers similar topics. Again, timingapp.com slash help. You can also find a lot of documentation articles in there, again, for example, about rules. Lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button on YouTube and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you.